Now, computer software uh, refers to a collection of programs. So it is a series of instructions uh, which are given to the computer to obey. So those instructions are written in such a way that the computer can follow them and execute them. So when you say the computer is executing the instructions, it's following the instructions. So the series of instructions are generally referred to as software. Now software is put into three categories. That is system software, application software, and utility software. Now that uh, structure there summarizes software in terms of system software, application software, and uh, utility uh, software. System software. System software refers to the software that runs all computer hardware and other applications in a computer system. So the system software provides an interface between hardware and user applications. So obviously the interface is, is required because machines speak a different language from, from the human beings. The machines speak what is called the machine language, which is in zeros and ones, which is the binary uh, language. And while humans speak various languages like J French, English, German, and so on and so on, so there's need for that interface to bridge the differences in languages. Now, the system software is divided into three. They are what are called operating systems, language processors, and device drivers. Now, the operating system, commonly known as the OS, uh, is the software responsible for all the functioning of hardware parts and the interoperability uh, to carry out tasks. So, the, 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 software, the uh, operating system is software that is loaded in our computer memory when the computer is switched on. It loads into the memory through a process called uh, booting. Now, the operating system is responsible for a number of functions. Now, the functions of an operating system are like one, managing resources, resources like memory, the hardware resources, printers, and so on. They are managed by the operating system. Number two, providing user interface. So the operating system is, pro is responsible for, pro for providing user interface, like graphical user interface for some operating system. Some provide command interface, some provide uh, menu-driven interface. So that's one of the key uh, functions of the operating system. Then number three, the running of applications. So other applications like word processors, spreadsheets, and so on and so on, like graphic applications to run on a computer, they are uh, uh, it's a responsibility of the operating system. And support of built-in utility programs, and also control of computer hardware. So those are some of the five major functions of an operating system. Now let's move on to language processors. Now, language processors are an important function of system software uh, whose purpose is to convert user instructions into machine understandable language. So when we talk of uh, human-machine interactions, uh, languages are of three types. There is what is called the machine language. The machine language is the language that is uh, understood by the computer, which is binary language, which are the zeros and ones. Then there is uh, the assembly language. The assembly language introduces a layer of abstraction by defining mnemonics. Mnemonics are English like words or symbols used to denote a long string of zeros and ones. Then uh, there are high level languages. The high level languages are English like statements, uh, which are mostly used in, uh, in modern programming languages. So, so for us when we write programming language today, most of the languages that we use are high level languages. So those high level languages, they need to be translated from the high level language to the machine language. So to do that, uh, it is done by using uh, our, our, our translators. And our translators come in three forms. They are compilers, they are interpreters, and they are also assemblers. So assemblers, they translate assembly language. While interpreters, they trans translate one statement at a time for high-level languages, while the compiler converts or translates a whole program at a time, again, on uh, high-level languages. And the translation is always from high-level or from assembly language into machine language, which is the zeros and ones, which is the language of the computer. Now, device drivers. Device drivers is software that controls and uh, enables functioning of uh, peripheral devices which are connected to a computer. So, when you connect to a, a scanner, a microphone, or a speaker, or a printer to a computer, there is need for software that enables the computer to recognize that particular uh, piece of hardware. And that software which enables the cognition of uh, peripheral devices is called a device driver. So, usually when you buy a piece of hardware or a peripheral component, usually it comes with a disk. Uh, of its drivers or sometimes they some some drivers are found in, in built in, in in modern operating systems so in talk of most of our modern operating systems like windows windows 7 windows 10 some drivers are found for some peripheral components
Now we move on to application software. Application software is software used to accomplish specific tasks rather than uh, running uh, of a computer system. Now, application software can consist of a single program like Image Viewer or a collection of, of programs which are called uh, software suites, like a software package. All right, and application software is divided into two. They are what are called generic applications and custom made applications. So when creating applications, the industry is always wants to strike a balance between creating custom made applications versus creating generic applications. While both have got their advantages and disadvantages, there is always one of the two that suits a, a, a particular uh, project best. Now, custom made applications are those that are made uh, specifically for one client and for a specific purpose. Right? For example, if you go for it, a university, university can create its own payroll. The payroll is system is meant to, to work at that particular university and for that particular university. So it's payroll and for that particular university. So we say it's custom made or tailor made. But when you look at the generic applications, they are applied in a much wider, for a much wider selection of clients. For example, if you look at applications like word processors like Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, they are used by a much wider selection of, of, of clients. They are not for a specific person, they are not for a specific organization, hence they are called generic uh, applications. Now, some common generic applications are word processors, uh, spreadsheets, presentation, database, multimedia tools, all those examples. I think we are quite familiar with the Microsoft products like Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Access. We are also familiar with uh, um, uh, other applications based on, on the web, like uh, the ones from Google, right? Google Docs, uh, Google Sheets, and so on and so on, Google Slides. The utility software. Now, the utility software is actually a cross between system software and application software. So, examples of utilities there are antivirus software, disk management tools, file management tools, compression tools, backup tools. All those are specific tools found in the category of utility software. Now, that table shows a comparison between system software and, uh, and application software. Uh, the examples are most common uh, operating systems the uh, Microsoft Windows, Linux, Unix, Mac OS, DOS, all those examples. Then examples of applications are Word, Excel, Web Browsers, Impera, MySQL Database, a PowerPoint, Adobe Photoshop, and so on. Then uh, also comparison in terms of inter interaction there and the dependence there. Uh, that's a general comparison of application software and system software. Now let's move on to software licensing. Now, as computer users, you should be aware of uh, the copyright issues, copyright issues with regards to the software and files that we use in the form of graphics, audio, text, video, etc. Now, a copyright is an exclusive legal right that prohibits copying of intellectual property without permission of the copyright holder. So, computer software is considered intellectual property and it is protected by the copyright law. So the Internet and World, World, World Wide Web, WWW, present tremendous opportunities for sharing information. But it is important to remember that what is freely available does not imply that it can be copied. So we must always follow the law and uh, follow the rules with regard to, to copyright law of intellectual property. Now, software piracy now is the unauthorized distribution and use of copyrighted computer programs. So software and data files can be easily copied and transmitted via disks, but making a copy of commercial or proprietary uh, a software with, uh, for a, a, a relative or a friend is an act of piracy. So software and data files can also be downloaded from a network and, and be copied. This is known as network piracy. So when we are copying and distributing without authority of the order of the copyright, we are con con doing software piracy. And software piracy is a crime. Now let's look at types of software licenses. There's what is called a proprietary software. Proprietary software is software whose rights are owned by an individual or a business. Usually a software developer. The owner of the software is protected by the copyright law and the owner expects you to buy a copy in order to use it. So most of the software that we use like our Windows 10, 7, Microsoft Office, Word, Excel and so on and so on, they are proprietary software. Microsoft expects us to pay for us to use the licenses. So that is proprietary software. So we must never pirate proprietary software. We must buy copies 
buy copies as, as expected by the owner of the software uh, so that we live within the law. Then there's also what is called open source software. Open source software is freely available to the public. The programmer creates the program and make it available to others uh, for use without a cost. And usually it's created in, in, by, by, by communities and the, and the individual programmers are also allowed to modify the program. That is uh, open source. Like for example, Linux is an open source software. Now, trial version software. Trial version software refers to software which is given to consumers to try it, then you are required to buy. Sometimes you are given a like 30 day trial, 60 day trial, 15 day trial, then after the trial version, you are expected to buy a full version of the software. Let's move on to shareware. Now, shareware is copyrighted software that is distributed free of charge, but it requires users to make a contribution in order to get uh, technical help or documentation or upgrades. So usually it happens with the games. You play, you play, and get to a particular level. Say you're told to make a donation or to make a contribution for you to get to higher levels. Then there's freeware. Freeware is software that is available free of charge. And uh, although it is available free of charge, the author retains the copyright, which means that you cannot do anything that is not expressly e e expressly allowed by the author. Usually the author allows people to use the software, but not to sell it. Now there's also the end user license agreement, the EULA. Now the EULA is a, is a shrink wrap license or end user license agreement. Uh, printed license found inside software pages. Usually users are duty bound to use the software according to conditions set out in the license sheet. There is no need for users to sign up to any contracts with the software house. Users are encouraged to send the registration card included on the package. This registration entitles users to information and minor upgrades that are released from time to time by the software manufacturer. Now let's move on to units of measure. How do we measure data? Data is measured using um, what are called you what are called the units of measure, which are the binary digits. So the smallest unit of data is called a bit or a binary digit, which is a zero a one. It is the smallest unit of of data. Now when you've got uh, eight bits, they form what is called a byte. So the byte becomes the smallest unit of usable data. Well, the bit is the smallest unit of data, the byte is the smallest unit of usable data, because the byte is eight bits, which is equivalent to a character. Now, when we've got a thousand bytes, they become uh, a kilobyte, which is approximately 1024 bytes. Now, when we've got approximately a million bytes, that becomes a million, a megabyte. Now, when we've got a billion bytes, it becomes a gigabyte. And when we've got a, 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 a trillion bytes, it becomes a terabyte. So the bit, byte, kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte become the units of measure of, of information in terms of capacity. So we can say this device can, can store one terabyte of data. This device can store one gigabyte of data. This device can store 25 megabytes of data. That is how we measure data in terms of capacity. We can also measure processing speed. The processing speed or the CPU speed is measured using what are called heads, which is H subset. So the heads in one head is one cycle per second. So usually when we measure the speed of a processor is in terms of those heads. So when there are a million cycles per second, we say it's a mega head. When it's a billion cycles per second, we say it's a giga head. Most of our machines today, we talk of 3.8 gigahertz, 3.5 gigahertz, 2.1 gigahertz. So the head, mega head, giga head are the units of measure of CPU speed. Computer viruses. Now, computer virus is a parasitic software that piggybacks on a real programs. So, a virus can attach its software program, uh, such as a spreadsheet, and each time the spreadsheet runs, the virus runs too. And it is a chance also to reproduce uh, and attach itself to other programs. And also, it is the capacity to recover. So, computer viruses, they work really like the biological virus. So, they have a number of viruses, like email viruses, Trojan horses, worms. Worms usually uh, attack computer networks. Trojan horses can actually attack and, and destroy computer hardware as well. Well, email uh, virus usually they travel and move its attachments following the emails. So when you send and receive unsolicited emails, there's a chance of a virus coming along with such emails. Now, what are some of the tips to avoid computer viruses? 
is to must install uh, uh, antivirus software from a reputable vendor and it must be licensed and it must be able to update regularly on the internet. Now, in addition, scanning for virus on a regular basis uh, is also encouraged. Now, use of virus scan before you open any new programs or files uh, that may contain executable code is also encouraged. You are also uh, encouraged if you are a member of the online community or chat room, be careful about accepting files or clicking links that you find or that people send you within the community. And also make sure that uh, you back up all your data, files, documents, and uh, store them at a separate location in order to keep uh, your, your information safe. That is the end. Thank you.